Hi guys, I'll give our people just a couple of minutes to uh, to join us. Uh, well, not even a couple of minutes, I'll give them a minute and then uh, we're going to crack straight on. Um, hi Ben, and hi to all the other guys that are tuning in. Um, I promise that this one, yes you can send hearts by tapping on your screen. It's, um, it lets me know if you like what I'm saying or if you think, oh that's not so good, you can tap, yeah, tap away there. Like, that lets me know if, uh, if you think that what I'm saying is relevant, so by all means. Um, before we start, if you are on, do me a favour, if you are on an Android device, swipe up like this, and that's going to share it with your people, and if you're on iPhone, swipe right like that. And what will happen is you'll be sharing it with uh, some of the other people that might find this interesting. This is really aimed at boxers and fighters because it's been these uh, altitude training masks have been used by uh, by these guys but it's also aimed at any fitness training people who are interested in in these things and today's pericast part of my seven minutes for seven days is do altitude training masks work it's a really good question because you there's a, a new rocky film coming out fairly soon and uh, I'm really looking forward to that it's called Creed and in it, one of the fighters is wearing an altitude training mask, and he's training with it. Um, but, you know, as we all know, uh, Hollywood isn't real. So let's just make that, you know, let's just make that point first. Um, the fact that altitude training itself, and living at altitude, actually does have an incredibly beneficial effect if you're training for endurance. Um, but this is the thing. It's living at altitude, not training at altitude, that has this effect. The human body is an incredibly adaptive organism, and by living at altitude, this, this is my altitude here, it's not very high because I'm not that tall myself, but living at altitude, uh, you've got to be living at over 2,400 meters, give or take, or it's about 8,000 feet, and for that effect to, to start taking place is around about eight to nine days. Uh, once you've been around eight to nine days at that altitude pretty much constantly, what happens is the blood begins to, the EPO and the blood naturally occurring, not not the other stuff. Uh, question there, benefits, uh, can we cover that at the end? Remind me at the end. Um, and what happens is the um, if you're living at altitude of more than 8,000 feet, um, then more blood, red blood cells are produced. In fact, up to 30% more red blood cells are produced. This enables the blood to carry more oxygen to the muscles so it can be utilized. Now, I've got a question for you, and you guys can tap on your screen at the very bottom and you can send me uh, your answers to this. How many of the world's top 100 marathon runners do you estimate are training, are living at altitude. Fire away, send me your, your thing. What do you think? 10, 20, 30, what do you reckon? I'll tell you, I'll tell you the result. Don't be afraid of being wrong, because it's not, there's nothing to be uh, worried about that. Any opinions? How many of the world's top 100 marathon runners live at altitude? Very few, 65, few different opinions there? 46, some good guesses there, right. In 2012, 98 of the world's top 100 marathon runners live at altitude, 98. Now the other two are Brazilian, and we don't know that they live at altitude, but we suspect that they do, because it would be damn near impossible for them to be in the top 100 marathon runners if they didn't live at altitude. And you think, damn, well, there must be a lot of these people living up a mountain. No, it's not a case of them living in a mountain because what they can do is they can live in what's called a nitrogen tent or a nitrogen house where the partial pressure of oxygen, there's only 15% of oxygen in the air that they live in. Uh, they need to be in these environments around about 20 hours per day for this effect to take place. This is where we're going to come back to uh, the altitude training masks. Uh, so you've got to be at lower pressure of oxygen for around 20 hours per day, give or take. Now the maximum effect occurs after three to four weeks, 21 days in fact, but it, it does depend on the individual. So you've got to be three weeks, 20 hours, at 8,000 feet or more living constantly for this to have an effect to create more red blood cells for uh, feet. Now there are different training protocols. 
So, th sorry, these nitrogen houses. So people live in these houses where several rooms or even the whole house is pumped full of nitrogen. And what happens is, not full, but so that the, the oxygen is reduced. And then what happens is this, this effect occurs within the human body. And there are different training protocols. However, hi. Um, there is a training protocol where you live high and train high. So the guys that go to Iten in uh, Kenya, when they are living and training high, then, thanks very much, cheers. When they're living and training high, it's called LHTH, live high, train high. These guys are living and training at over 8,000 feet. So obviously there's a beneficial effect to them, but there's also a different protocol. Now, this protocol is called live high, train low. So these guys will stay in a camp up in the mountains or up at altitude and they will train low, which is great. There, there is a disadvantage to that to an extent that we have to be careful that they don't overtrain. Now, we've got to be careful that they don't overtrain because if they do do that, then they, they can overreach. But so th that's a little bit of a problem. However, if you are, are living in a nitrogen house and you live at sea level, you're effectively doing what's called live high, train low. So you go out the door to do your training and that's a live high, train low protocol. Now, let me just have a look at the, um, at the manufacturer's claims on these masks and how they work. Here's one I prepared earlier. The altitude training masks work by reducing the flow of air to the lungs and it says thus simulating the effect of training at high altitude right this is the problem it's not living at high altitude it's training at high altitude so the protocol here is what we've got is live low train high there's the problem and this is why they don't work and the problem is that not only do they not work but they're actually detrimental to sea level performance. I know this is going to ruffle a few feathers because some people are like, well, I like my altitude training mask. Don't worry. There is a little bit of a uh, silver lining to this cloud. What I want you to do, right? You've spent, and I've got a question from someone that already asked me a question before I went on. And this guy asked me, please make sure that you cover this question. Well, I've just wasted 80 quid on this training mask. What am I going to do? Well, no, you haven't wasted 80 quid on this training mask, my friend. You haven't. Because what I want you to do is to picture yourself on Facebook or wherever training in this altitude mask. And then your opponent, your next opponent, is going to see you training in this altitude mask. And what's going to happen is... Hi, guys. Uh, what's going to happen is they may think, oh, this guy's got, um, got some training method that I'm not getting part of. So they may buy themselves one and then they train at a disadvantage. So by all means, be pictured in your training mask, but don't, don't actually be using the thing. So what I want you to do is, if you do have one of these altitude training masks, don't use it, please, because it is not going to benefit you. The science is there. You can Google it if you want to, for goodness sake. Don't trust Wikipedia. It is not always a, a really good source. So the question is then, before we go to questions, why do people wear these train masks? One, they've seen their favorite fighter wearing it, but why is their favorite fighter wearing it? The reason that they're wearing it is sponsorship and money. That's the reason why. And you'll, um, if people are watching that, then just imagine, you know, you've seen the, the new Rocky film and you've seen this guy training in this, in this altitude training mask and you watch it, Hollywood ain't real. It's not real. It reminds me of that film. It's a brilliant film too. Um, Fast and Furious 7, where Vin Diesel jumps this car out of this tower and leaps it across probably two or three hundred meters, lands in another tower and then drives to safety. It ain't real. It's not real. It's Hollywood. So don't do it in your training. Pass this on to anybody that you know who is a fighter uh, or in fitness or whatever they want. But these altitude training masks are detrimental not just don't have an effect they are detrimental if anyone's got any questions one guy just asked before what about doing your sprint repetitions on a treadmill um, in an altitude training mask my honest opinion is you may as well train with a plastic bag over your head they won't do they won't have any beneficial effect because you sprints you're working on a different energy system you're either working on your uh, phosphocreatine system or you're going to be working perhaps even into your anaerobic system. So there, there won't actually be any effect whatsoever with that. So I'm sorry, the, the altitude train mask won't help. And secondly, on the case of doing your sprints on a treadmill, 
No, don't do your training, your sprints on a treadmill because it ain't fast enough. Tomorrow, actually, my pericast tomorrow at 12 o'clock is going to be how you can include uh, sprints in your training. Now, whether that's in your boot camp or whether that's in your fight training, because every fighter should be doing sprints in their training. I'm going to show you a few drills. I'm going to show you one thing that you can do, one small thing with your foot that will make you faster. One tiny, tiny thing that is going, I guarantee, will make you faster. It takes me about two seconds to drop that hint. So that's what I'm going to do. Right. I have overrun on my time. So does anyone have any further questions? I promised seven minutes, but I've been waffling. Um, any other questions? If not, I'm out. I hope you found this really useful, guys. And thank you very much for joining me tomorrow. I'll be back at two o'clock and I'll be talking about sprints and stuff.